In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit video using your iPhone. And even if you've never done any kind of video editing before, I'm going to guide you through the basics. So you can get editing on your smartphone, no previous experience required. So I'm going to be using my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which I think is one of the best smartphones to shoot and also edit video on. One great advantage about such a big phone is the screen size. A bigger screen makes it a bit easier to see what you're doing. And smartphones are such powerful filmmaking tools because unlike regular cameras, you can also edit your video clips on them. I mean, nowadays, smartphones are pretty much like mini laptops in your pocket, minus the keyboard. Um, but we can even add a keyboard and a mouse if we want to. So let me show you how. Of course, you can simply edit with the iPhone as it is. But if you're going to do a lot of editing on your phone, it will make the task easier with a few extras. And first, I'm going to mount the iPhone on a mini tripod. I picked up one of these on AliExpress for almost nothing, like about five pounds, including postage. And it tips back so you can angle the iPhone. And it's like having a laptop screen. Next, I'm going to connect a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. And they're relatively inexpensive. I think that both of these cost me about £30. To connect the keyboard, make sure Bluetooth is on. Find the keyboard listed and tap to connect. And there's a code which you need to type into the keyboard to complete pairing. I found connecting the mouse to be a little bit more complicated. Theoretically, a Bluetooth mouse should connect the same way, but my iPhone 12 Pro Max couldn't find it this way. So if your mouse doesn't appear in the Bluetooth list, then try this. Instead of Bluetooth, open Accessibility, then Touch, enable Assistive Touch, scroll down to Devices, open that and hopefully you will find your mouse there. When it asks for a code, input four zeros. And for a cursor, your mouse will control this grey dot or circle. OK, now your iPhone is set up for editing video. Your iPhone comes with iMovie pre-installed, so you can use that to edit right away. However, I recommend using LumaFusion. If you've never used any kind of editing software, the basic principles are pretty simple. To edit first, you need something to edit. Normally, that will be media comprised of video and audio files, but we can also use still photos. But these files are then placed on a timeline to edit. The timeline is an interface that allows us to play our video and audio clips so that when we press play, those clips play in the exact order we want them to play in. All but the most basic editing programs divide the timeline further into a number of available tracks. To edit a video, we combine a number of video and audio clips on this timeline. Depending on the project, this can be quite a simple task, but some projects require complex timelines with thousands of clips and effects. And this is where the timeline tracks come in. The tracks allow us to place more than one video or audio clip on the timeline in the same position or overlapping. And this makes editing video easier, as well as allowing more complex editing techniques. So before we edit a video, we need to start a new project. To start a new project in LumaFusion, tap the plus sign button. This opens up new project settings. So it's probably a good idea to give your project a title. Titling your project is all part of being organized as an editor. And once you start editing lots of projects, each one with lots of files, not labeling projects well, and the media with the project can cost you hours or days of lost time trying to find everything. I'm going to call my project editing on an iPhone tutorial. Tap the plus sign again to open the new project. The top of the screen is your media sources on the left and the playback screen on the right. The bottom half of the screen is the timeline and timeline controls. So let's start with the simplest kind of edit, which is basically editing a one take vlog with somebody talking to camera, which is like what I'm doing now. If all we're editing is a long clip of ourselves talking to camera, we can edit it with only one track of video and audio. So I've recorded this video clip with the same iPhone using the native camera app. To find it in LumaFusion, I just tap on this icon in the corner of the screen. The icon will change to indicate which source we're looking at in the top left portion of the screen. At the moment, this flower-shaped icon tells us we're looking at the photos and videos stored on the phone. The icon is the same as the iPhone Photos Gallery symbol, but without the colors. 
when the photos app icon is in this corner, anything in the photos gallery will be listed in the box top left. So I find the clip and either drag it onto the timeline or I double tap it to send it to the timeline. Now, now we have our first video clip on the timeline, which is this long horizontal blue line. At the end of the line is another blue line. This line is what's known as the playhead. The playhead shows us where we are on the timeline. If we move or swipe or use the mouse, we can slide the video clip backwards and forwards. In the screen top right, you can see the video clip playing forwards and backwards as we move the clip. And this shows us where we are in the video clip on the timeline. When we're editing a vlog like this, usually all we want to do is cut out all the bad bits and leave the good bits. So we drag this clip back to the beginning and now we want to play the video. To play the clip, tap the play button, which is a triangle below the preview screen. We can tap the screen or use the mouse. And if we have a keyboard connected, we can use the space bar. In pretty much all editing programs, the space bar stops and starts playback. And if you get into the habit of using it, it really speeds up editing. Now we play the clip until we get to a part we want to keep. And then we need to cut the video before and after the good bit. To make a cut in the video clip, place the playhead at the position where you want to cut and tap on the scissors icon. A cut is made and now you have two clips of video on the timeline. Next, find the end of the good part. Do the same again, position the playhead and make a cut. We want to keep the good bit on the timeline and remove the bad bit. So click on the first clip to select it. Then click the trash can icon. If you have a keyboard, you can use the delete button. Notice that the clip shuffles along automatically so that there is no empty space at the start of the timeline. And this is how LumaFusion works and some other editing software like Final Cut Pro. So now we just go through the whole clip cutting and deleting the bad bits. Each time we delete a bad bit, everything ahead of it shuffles along automatically, so there's no gaps. What we're left with is a sequence of me talking to camera, the whole thing from one angle. And that means these cuts that we've just made are what's known as jump cuts. Traditionally, when editors cut clips of film or video together, they would be between at least two angles. But these days, when cutting a vlog, we usually don't have a second angle. You've probably seen this a lot if you watch vlogs on YouTube. And the thing is, a jump cut can be a bit jarring. It doesn't feel as smooth as cutting to a different angle. And that said, they can be used in professional projects. So one trick that we can use to smooth out the cuts a little bit is to zoom in and out on those cuts. And this makes them a little bit less jarring. If I select the second clip on the timeline, and now tap on this pencil icon, which opens up a whole new view. And this is where we can edit all kinds of parameters just for this particular clip. So we want to select frame and fit. Then on the right, we want to open up the size and position controls. Scroll down to where it says size and adjust it to about 110%, which I think is enough to make a subtle change. Again, we can use our keyboard here. In the left screen, we can see that the image has now expanded outside the frame of the viewable clip. And by zooming in like this, we're cropping off the edges of the image. So now when we go from the clip before to this clip, it feels a little bit more like a different shot, but we're not finished. A nice trick to make this work even better is to make sure the subject's eyes are about the same level in each shot, because when you zoom in, the eyes will now be higher unless we lower the position of the clip. I usually lower the image so that the top is level with the top of the frame. I just position Y so that those lines are level. So the cut now uses the subject's face as a point of focus, which looks more professional because it's where the audience's eyes are also focused. So finally, I just need to do the same to the rest of the clips on the timeline and it will jump backwards and forwards each cut. So you can see this is just about the simplest kind of editing. All we're doing here is making cuts so we can throw out the unwanted parts of the clip. A lot of YouTubers will even go as far as to remove the breaths to increase the pace of the edit even further. So to take the next step when learning to edit video, we need to start using multiple tracks. In LumaFusion and most other editing platforms, we get multiple tracks for video and audio. And when I edit, I almost never use just one track. If I'm editing a YouTube video in Premiere, I'll probably use about four or five tracks and 
about three audio tracks. For example, what if I wanted to add some music to this vlog to underscore what I'm saying? First, I need an audio file containing the music. So if we have a file of music that we want to use on the device, we can navigate to that file in LumaFusion using this area at the top left. But for this example, I'm going to use a track from Storyblocks. So Storyblocks is actually a separate company which provides a library of all kinds of stock video footage, music and sound effects. So we just scroll down to the folder labeled music, double tap or use the mouse to open up a library of music files. There's a name for the track at the top. The blue shape below represents the audio level of the track as it's played. So too cool for school, it's quite a thin line, so that means it's not as loud as future bass, which is a really fat line. Like with video, double tap or drag the file onto the timeline. If you double tap or use the mouse, the music will drop onto the timeline. Onto the audio track, starting at the point where you have positioned the playhead. The editing is really all about timing, and where we position video and audio is very important. I mean, it's really central to the process of editing. Good editors are people who tend to love getting lost in this process of building an edit and then spending hours adjusting and perfecting things. So note that Storyblocks provides a number of free music tracks, labelled free. Surprise, surprise. If you want to use the others, you need to pay a subscription. These music files are not stored on your device, so when you first use one, it takes a little, just a couple of seconds to download and now depending on the speed of your connection. And now it's stored on your device for the next time you want to use it. Okay, now we have video and audio tracks, and when we press play, they will play simultaneously. If you want to know more about smartphone filmmaking, in LumaFusion, video tracks are blue and occupy the top half of the timeline. And when we add another video clip, we can choose to stack it above the first video clip. Audio tracks are green and occupy the bottom area of the timeline. If we add another audio track, that's going to be stacked underneath. So there's a difference in the way audio and video files play back. Because if we have multiple tracks of audio, they will all play mixed together. But if we have multiple tracks of video, only the video clip at the top of the stack is visible. The thing is though, when I added the vlog clip, all we got was a blue video file, but there was audio playing. So where is that audio? When you add a video clip which contains audio, LumaFusion does not add a separate audio track. Instead, it keeps the audio and video file together. And you can actually see the audio level as a lighter blue color in the bottom half of the video clip. If for some reason you want the audio to have its own track, just tap the detach audio button. Now the audio has its own track. But for now, I don't want to separate them, so I will undo what I just did. To undo your last change, tap the left pointing arrow. Or if you have a keyboard, you can use the traditional Command plus Z keys. Okay, so what if I now want to add some B-roll to this vlog? So when you have a main clip, which in this case is someone talking to camera, any extra shots that you add on top of this are called B-roll shots. Traditionally, the main clip would have been called the A-roll with the roll referring to a roll of film. But these days, the A roll has been dropped and we just talk about B roll. If I wanted to cut to this clip while I continued talking, so I could separate the audio from the first clip, then make a cut in the main clip and drop the B roll clip into the cut. But now the video to the right has shuffled along to make space and it's out of sync with the separated audio. I could fix this and make it work, but it would take time. And if I decided I wanted to change it later, it's going to be tricky messing about. So this is one big reason why we have extra tracks to work with. Instead of cutting the main clip, I simply place the B-roll clip in the track above. Now, when it reaches that clip, the software will cut to the clip above and it saved me all that fussing around. And if I want to adjust the B-roll clip a little, it's going to be very easy. Using tracks, I could just go through the timeline, adding B-roll clips very quickly. And now we have this nice vlog with close-ups inserted. Now, when we play it back, there is a bit of a problem. Yeah, the music audio is way too loud and it's drowning out my voice. So to fix this, we need to mix the audio. Mixing audio is about adjusting the levels of multiple audio files 
to create a master audio track that is pleasing to the ear. So quite a common mistake, which I've actually done myself, is to have music playing under the voice but it's too loud. So music is very powerful and adding it to video can dramatically increase the audience's emotional response to that video. And for that reason, it can be a bit tempting to have it playing loudly. Just ask Christopher Nolan. But if your audience is trying to hear someone speaking, having loud music can quickly get irritating. I mean, there's no real rule for how loud it should be, but if you have a long passage of speaking, you know, like maybe five or 10 seconds or more, then I would say to keep the audio level pretty low or even just don't have any music. So let's turn this music down. I tap on the music on the timeline to select it. And now tap the pencil button to edit the file settings. The volume of any audio track is controlled by its gain level. So look to the right here and find the gain slider. And let's bring it down by 25 decibels. And by the way, decibels is the official name for measuring audio loudness. And it's often written as dB with a little d and a big b. If you want to know more about smartphone filmmaking, my new book, Smartphone Videography, Beginners Too Advanced, is now available to download for my members on Patreon. Okay, the music is at a much better level now sitting comfortably under my voice. In professional video work, especially factual TV, music and spoken voice is often mixed using a technique called audio ducking. Audio ducking is where we temporarily lower or duck the volume level of one audio track as soon as a second audio track begins. This audio level is then returned to its previous level as soon as the second clip ends. So practically speaking, this is used to lower the level of music audio when someone starts speaking and then boost it again when they stop. And LumaFusion has a handy little audio ducking feature. So here's how to use it. Get back to the timeline and tap to select the file containing the spoken voice audio. Because it's combined with the video in this case, I can just tap the video clip and then the pencil button to edit. At the bottom of the screen, we need to select audio settings by tapping the little speaker icon. On the right, open the configuration settings. Where it says ducking, we can choose between setting it to none, auto or master. So we want to change this to master. And this means LumaFusion will now treat this audio as the most important. And any other audio clips playing at the same time and which are set to auto will be ducked when the audio is playing. So we need to go back to the timeline, click on the music file to select, tap the pencil button, go to ducking again, and make sure the music is set to auto. And it's set to auto by default. So once we set the master audio, that should be enough. Now, when we play the video, as soon as the master clip starts, LumaFusion automatically fades the music down by a set number of decibels. So if you want to join me there, the link is in the description. You can adjust how many decibels by tapping the project settings button, select ducking and scroll down to duck volume. By default, it is set to minus 20 dB. Now, if you find that minus 20 is too loud, that probably means that you need to turn down the whole audio track. I mean, you could set this to minus 20 or minus 30 dB, but then there might be too much of a dramatic difference between the loud and the quieter level of the music. Audio ducking is often used when a video transitions from a speaking section to what's known as a montage. When we have lots of short clips of video and we edit them all together one after the other, this is known in filmmaking terms as a montage. A montage is used across all kinds of filmmaking, narrative fiction, documentaries, factual TV, sports shows, YouTube and lots of others. The purpose of a montage is to create a dynamic video experience where time is compressed to allow more information to be shown in a shorter space of time. Usually a montage does not include an actor or person speaking, although sometimes voiceover narration might be used. So in a movie, we might use a montage like a transitional section of the film. So in other types of video, montages might be used to give an exciting snapshot of the video's content. A sports show might start with a montage of the most dramatic moments cut together. As well, a montage could be used to show the best parts of a location during a travel video. 
Editing a montage is a lot of fun because we can edit the clips to music. And combining cinematic shots with music can really drive home the emotion you want the audience to feel. And evoking emotion in your videos is key to engaging your audience and keeping them watching. So let's add a montage to this vlog. So far we've only added whole files to the timeline. But when we are adding lots of clips, we don't want to keep adding the whole clip each time. Rather, we just want the relevant part. And when editing, much of our time is spent viewing clips, finding the good bits, and then placing them on the timeline with all the other good bits. Essentially, editing is a process of cutting away the bits we don't want. And if we do that before we place it on the timeline, it saves us a lot of time. The way to do this is to use the preview window. When you select a clip by tapping on it, that clip appears in the preview window. So if I tap on a video clip from our media sources top left, the preview of that clip appears top right. And if I select a clip on the timeline, again a preview appears top right. So choose a clip of B-roll from the photos folder. Preview that clip and find a good start point. If I press I, which stands for in on the keyboard, the yellow bracket on the left moves to that point. Next, find the end point and press O, which stands for out, and the right yellow bracket moves to that point. Now when I drag or send the clip to the timeline, it will only send the part between the two yellow brackets. And it's much easier to handle than using the whole clip. And of course you don't need to use a keyboard to set these in and out points. You can just drag the yellow brackets along with your finger or with the mouse. When editing a montage, we should try to make the cuts follow the rhythm of the music. So we need to fine tune the length of this clip to match the rhythm. Watch and listen and where you feel a cut should be, tap the space bar to stop the video. Or just press stop. Now the clip is just a bit too long, so I need to trim off that end. And I can either use the scissor tool and make a cut then delete the unwanted bit. Or I can tap where the white arrow is and drag the end of the clip. A trick I use to make a quick montage is to use this first clip as a kind of measure for the next clips. Find the next clip, set in and out points, place it on the timeline. Now drag it onto the track above the first montage clip. Remember we measured the first clip to fit the rhythm of the music. As we know, music usually has a consistent rhythm, so if all the clips in the montage match the first clip's length, it should keep the montage in time with the music. Drag the end of the top clip to match the length of the bottom clip, then move it along the timeline so that it follows on after the bottom clip. And you just keep repeating this process until you reach the end of the montage. Now you have a montage with a nice, tight pacing created by the music. So now we have our vlog with B-roll and a montage. I think next we should try to add some titles. We can add titles for all kinds of uses. A main title to tell the viewers what the video is section titles, subtitles for different languages, or if you want people to be able to follow the video without audio. In this video and my other videos, I will frequently use titles to help me illustrate the information I'm trying to get across. Adding titles in LumaFusion is pretty easy. Tap that library sources button in the top left corner and choose titles from the menu. So you've got a few templates here for preset titles, but I'm just gonna use the basic one. Drag the title down and place it on the track above the video. We can see in the preview window, we now have a title. With the title selected on the timeline, tap the pencil edit button. To change the words of the title, tap the button on the right with a pencil and a screen. Just start typing to enter a new title and then tap done. If you want to change the font, just tap the button with the two T's. While I was doing this, I discovered there's a little bug since the iOS 15 update, I think. But once you open this window, you can't actually get out of it. Tapping cancel doesn't work. So to fix this, just tap a font to select it and then turn the phone so LumaFusion is in portrait mode. And then you just swipe down from the top of the screen. And hopefully they'll fix that soon anyway. I think the title doesn't quite stand out enough. So let's add a background. Tap the button with a plus sign on the left of that row of buttons. Choose shape and change the color to something darker to contrast with the white text. I'm just going to use black. And you can see that the text has disappeared, and that's because we need to put the text on top of the shape. We'll close the shape settings with a little arrow and drag the shape above the text using the three little lines on the right. And this is a bit counterintuitive because putting the shape on top actually places it beneath the text in the frame. But anyway, so then open the shape settings and use the circles on the shape box in the preview window to resize the box. I'm going to make it into a kind of stripe across the frame. 
and I'll just bring the opacity down. The box helps to make the text stand out, but reducing the opacity, I think makes it a bit more subtle. Okay, so the final stage of editing is to export your video. When we export our edit, the program combines everything we've created into one video file with the audio attached. In LumaFusion, the button on the bottom right of the screen with an arrow pointing up is our export button. Tap that to open up the export options. We want the top option, which is movie. So I just want to save this to my iPhone's photos gallery. But we also have the option to export directly to YouTube, Vimeo, or there's other sharing options. So now we get this set of export settings, and these are basically based on the project settings. Now usually we can leave all these as they are, but one we might want to change is video quality. Video quality is the bitrate setting we want to give our final video. A higher bitrate will give us a better quality video, but a larger file. If you scroll down to the bottom, it gives you an estimate of how big the file will be with the current settings. If we change video quality, we can see the estimated file size also changes. What we're setting here is how much LumaFusion compresses the video as it exports it. There's a good idea to choose a higher quality, but remember that you can't actually add quality here. Most times we would choose between standard and quality. And below, we can choose the codec. H.264 is the more common codec, while H.265 is the updated version, which actually does a better job and reduces the size of the video file. But be aware, some platforms don't support H.265. Now that said, most do, and so I nearly always use H.265 these days. So now press the button with the upward pointing arrow and LumaFusion begins exporting. And it's going to take some time depending on the length of the video. And once it's finished, you should find it in your iPhone's photo gallery. Okay, so we're finished. And this is the result. If you want to know more about smartphone filmmaking, my new book, Smartphone Videography, Beginners Too Advanced, is now available to download for my members on Patreon. The book is over 170 pages long and it covers all the essential smartphone filmmaking topics. Things like how to get the perfect exposure, when to set manual control, which codecs to use, HDR, how to use frame rates, lenses, shot types, stabilization, and a load of other subjects as well. And also, members can access all five episodes of our smartphone shot series, Silent Eye. And to accompany each episode, we've also got other materials like schedules that we used for the shoots, uh, there's screenplays, there's a making of podcast for each episode. So if you want to know more about how to make your own short films using smartphones, this is the perfect place to get that inside information from people that have already done it. So if you want to join me there, the link is in the description, or you just press the little, uh, it might be a little Patreon icon coming up. And uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.